G'day there and welcome to another live stream here on our Facebook page. Super excited today uh, to bring you this live. We're talking to Julian Mather. Julian's up in Brisbane. Uh, Julian is a world-class videographer and you'll love this. Not only, you know, world-class videographer and smartphone rarely go together, but today they do. Um, he's got clients like ABC TV, BBC and National Geographic who he was a cameraman for. Uh, the only camera that he owns is his smartphone. So I will tell you that now. So, you know, if you've tuned in and you want to learn how to use video in your business and not have to worry about buying expensive gear, today is a great day for you. Let me tell you that. Uh, he shows you how this pocket-sized TV station will revolutionize the way that you make your business videos. And he's going to show you how to turn your smartphone into what he calls an anti-invisibility machine. I love that terminology, Julian. Welcome to the show, Julian. Hey, Ben. Thanks for having me along. So good to have you, mate. Now, I've, I've got a few notes here about your past. Um, hopefully, there's nothing in here that you don't know about. <laughs> Uh, uh, first of all, it says that you're a magician. So have you got a magic trick for us, buddy? Can we see a trick? Oh, uh, right, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> I gotta, I'll dive into my pocket and get some money. Hang on, watch out. The moths are coming out. <laughs> it's, now, if, you uh, are, if you are just tuning in, by the way, this is Julian. He's going to show you a trick first. We're going to get straight into the video stuff for you. All right, okay. It's just you. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that was very cool. Uh, very cool. Now, thanks for joining us for this live video. We are talking to Julian May that we're going to talk about how to get video smart and use your smartphone to grow your business, which is a really exciting topic. And I think everybody that's tuning in will know. And of course, we're using live video here as a way to promote our businesses and build an audience. And, and I think everyone that's tuning in will know that the, you know, the way that the world is going these days, we've all got smartphones in our pockets and multimedia is such an important part of reaching our target market. Um, not only are you a magician, you were a, uh, a, a, a army sniper. Yeah, yeah so I was an army sniper for three years. It, uh, uh, I always said that I did really well at school if you don't count learning. And <laughs> I, I can I, relate to that. <laughs> and I had this vision that I wanted to be a photojournalist, uh, but strangely enough, uh, I realized that uh, to be a photojournalist, it was not gonna happen in Brisbane where I was growing up. And I was walking down the street and I saw a, a, a bus shoulder and it was an army recruiting po poster on the side. And it had these soldiers walking through and they're walking through a pine forest. And pine trees were exotic because, you know, we had eucalypt trees. And I just had this sort of inkling that, wow, if I joined the army, I could get to where they are, which must be somewhere else in the world. And that's where photojournalism journalism is going to happen. So on that basis, I joined the army. And... Uh, I signed on the dotted line and then the, the yelling started and didn't stop for quite a while. Mm. And I decided, oh, I, you know, like uh, they didn't really sort of think I was going to be, a, you know, I thought I was going to be a photographer, but they had different plans for me. And I ended up uh, sort of getting out of regular infantry and moving into being an army sniper. And I learned so much, but it was literally the wrong view on life. I, I felt like I was looking through a, a narrow lens on the world. I needed a wider view. So, you know, eventually got into television where I wanted to go and uh, become a documentary cameraman. Yeah, and, you, and so you become a cameraman. So ABC TV, National Geographic, BBC Discovery. Um, so that would have been interesting. Uh, I, I always say it's the second best job in the world. Uh, you know, you literally, they would put a plane ticket in one hand, money in the other, kick me out the door and say, go tell people stories. Uh, and, you know, it was, you know, satisfied that my creative and practical sides, uh, it took me to some fantastic places, but above all, it introduced me to these amazing people who are in front of the lens. And I call these pe people my teachers. And it's from them that I learned my lessons that inspired me to eventually take me that I walked away from television at the top of my game because they inspired me to do these different things. And I had this idea that I was going to teach philanthropy to school children. So top of my game in TV, walked away, took this, built this program to take into schools, and I took it into deafening silence. Mm. I said, hang on a minute. They said it was really good. They said, it is a great program. I said, you said it's valuable. They, it is valuable. I said, well, why won't you book it? They said, you never ask us that question. That was a conversation we never had. And I learned my first lesson about running a business Never open a restaurant unless you've got a starving crowd. Mm. I, I, you know, I, I, I didn't have a commercial mindset. I was naive. 
And you know, that's my TV career was sailing off into the distance two years later. I, put, I, you know, I was getting this in, but it was push, push, push. And then that's when I had to reinvent myself and earn some money. So the hook that I used to get kids' attention with was magic. Because I always carried magic when I was filming mm. because it was a great way to build rapport with people. Because get this, Ben, apparently people don't trust the media. Oh, mm. really? <laughs> yeah, what a, apparently what a shock. so. <laughs> So the magic was always a good way to break down barriers, you know, get some kids laughing, get kids laughing, get people on your side, and then you get better performance out of them. Yeah. So I used those skills uh, and then became a, pro a professional magician. That's how I ended up there. That's how you ended up there as a child's yes. entertainer. And now you've ended up in the world of video. Now, thanks to those of you that are just on the Facebook Live. I am here with Julian Mather. And we are talking about using your smartphone to help you grow your business through using video. If you do have any questions throughout the live, feel free to ask them in the comments below. I am monitoring everything on my smartphone here as we speak. So I'm not using this as a video camera today, uh, but certainly using it to monitor the questions. And I'm sure Julian will be more than happy to answer your questions. So let, let's just jump straight into it, mate. And maybe, um, you know, your view on why is video so important? I mean, why are you, why are you pushing this barrow? Why do you think people need to listen to you about using video in their business? The first thing we've got to have to have here is a very, very brief history of industrial revolutions yep. because it is critical to where video is going. So the first industrial revolution was steam and people came out of the fields into these big factories driven by steam engines. A hundred years later, electricity came along, more of the same, but it was cleaner and easier. Then about 70 years later, the internet comes along and we get into the information age. That's the third industrial revolution. And then about 50 years later, we come to where we are now, the fourth industrial revolution. And that's artificial intelligence and, uh, and quantum computing. The thing you've got to understand there, first thing, is the time frame is shortening in between each of these changes. Our interface with the fourth industrial revolution is your smartphone. So out there, there are all these changes and the average Australian house has 17 devices connected to the internet. Wow. And our interface mm. is the smartphone. And as much as uh, you, know, you might be a farmer in the field and you can do remote health checks via your smartphone, you can operate you know, your sound system in your house via your smartphone, uh, we are now communicating on the smartphone. And there's a fit now more people in the world have a smartphone than have a toothbrush. There's a conversation starter for you. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we, we've all got these. Within a couple of years, four out of the five, four out of the five things we all do on our smart device are going to involve video. So the maths is really simple. If you're a business and you're not using video, you will become invisible to your customers who are all addicted to these smart devices. Mm. So that's why I call this an anti-invisibility machine. Yeah, I love that terminology. Now, in the intro there, I said, you know, a world-class videographer and the word smartphone don't normally go in the same sentence. So how can you create yourself a world-class videographer and you just use a smartphone? Tell us about that. When I was a magician, when I started doing magic, like that magic, I was doing all this sophisticated magic and people said to me, do you know there's money in kids and family entertaining? And I had a look, so I put a kids and family show together. It was really quite profitable. And they said, are you going to get a puppet? I said, you don't understand. A sophisticated person does not have a puppet. 12 months later, had a puppet on had my a hand. Puppet. <laughs> But what I learned was something weird. So the kids were all engaged, but then dads who were watching down the back, drinking beers and you know talking about sport would all stop and start to watch this puppet. And I went, what, what's going on here? And someone explained it to me. There's a power with puppets. And what it is, is that we as humans, collectively, if someone dies, what's the one thing we would wish? that we could bring them back to life. And with puppetry, you're animating the inanimate. You're putting life into the lifeless. And that's the power of it. There's something keys into this psychology. But the reason I tell you that story is that when I started doing uh, the magic, I didn't, I didn't use a puppet. And for 12 months, I lost money because the puppet I thought was too simple. It wasn't sophisticated enough. And I see exactly the same thing with video happening now. People, look at the smartphone and they go, it's not sophisticated, that's not good enough. 
and they don't use it. And they are, in my view, losing money. This has more power than most TV stations, uh, radio networks, uh, publishing houses of 15 years ago. Uh, this is so much power and people aren't keen in, into it. So my only phone I use now for nine out of the 10 things that I need to do is a smartphone. Now, I'm not saying that if you're a wildlife photographer, you need big lenses, you need that. If you're a medical photographer, you need microscopic stuff. But for nine out of 10 things that we all do, this is the future of where video is going. And, and, mm. and I can tell you why, because there's a crossroads, photography is at a crossroads. There's optical photography and computational photography. Very simply, optical photography is what we've grown up with. A box with a lens and a digital sensor at the back. Can't make lenses any clearer. You can't make the eyes see any sharper. And we're reaching a peak in digital sensors. Can't make it much more sens sensitive. But you take that image out and put it and apply computing power to it. Computing power is in its infancy right now and this is the future and you can see this now you know like if you just have uh, auto stabilization on in your phone you can move it around you get really smooth shots yeah. that's computing power happening the important thing for everyone listening to understand here and this will literally save you thousands of dollars the leaders in computational photography the future of photography are not canon and nikon and leica it's google and apple and microsoft and companies like that. This is the future and there's already a migration now in uh, uh, general photography and general video away from using traditional gear, prices of cameras and lenses are starting to come down as people migrate to the future of video. And this is where I wanna be. And for businesses, boy, you're already all using these. You're paid $1,500 a year for one of these and you're playing Candy Crush and you know, watching some cat videos on it. This is so powerful for your your business. Yeah, and that's coming from somebody who, I mean, you must have had some pretty sophisticated gear when you were working with BBC. I've, I, um, I, I've used the best, you know, top of the line gear. And I gotta tell you, there's a photo. So uh, this is the book and I'll, I'll direct people where you can get a free version of this later. I got a photo in the back here. And what it is, it's the 20th century camera kit and the 21st century camera kit. So the 20th century camera kit is three airport trolleys stacked with 20 cases of gear, because that's what I used to travel with. And the 21st century camera kit is like the size of a shaving bag. That's basically what I carry with me now. Everything I do fits in there. Uh, and, and, you know, and there's so many benefits with that. You know, when you've got a smartphone, so just say you've got a customer who's really happy with the service that you've just given them. And they're going, oh, you know, thanks very much. I didn't expect that. If you had traditional camera gear, you would go, oh, hang on a minute. Uh, I just got to go to the boot of my car and get this. Oh no, the, ch the battery's flat. Oh, you pull your phone out and you capture the moment, the immediacy mm. that these give you are brilliant. Yeah, I think, I think that's one of the keys, isn't it? You've always got, and, I, and if I look at most of the photos, I mean, I've got a really nice uh, you know, DSLR at home, I've got a Nikon camera. And, you know, I use that when I go out and do landscape shoots. But the, the camera that I've got with me the most is my smartphone, and I use it for just about everything. So I think you're right. So tell me, um, you know, what, what do you think? I mean, we know that everyone's got these smartphones. I think most people are thinking to themselves, yes, video is definitely uh, what's something I need to introduce into my business, into my marketing to help me get more reach or better cut through or more trust or whatever. What, what do you think stops people though? Like there's a lot of people that, that would know this, but they're just not doing it. Yeah, sure. So there's two, there's two things that are happening out there. You need to learn video literacy. Video literacy is the ability to make video. But hey, I can tell you that right now. Can you look at this? Can you press the red button? Bang, you've got it mastered. Simply, I mean, you know, most of that, that's the technological level you need these days. I mean, we can refine it a bit, but you have video literacy mastered. On the other hand, is video confidence. That's the ability to be on a video. And the two go together and they are inseparable. So if you think that, oh yeah, I've got to get into video and I've got to get my business into video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to either outsource uh, or I know there's all these apps out there and they can make these, you know, um, sexy little, you know, mm. um, 30 second videos with, you know, lots of vision around there and that'll do me. No, it won't. Because here's the thing. The world is hungry for truth at the moment. There is a zeitgeist for truth out there. The world wants authenticity and yeah. you 
are the perfect person to speak to your customer because you either have a product or a service that's going to solve a problem for, for them. And you can speak directly to them and you can do it through your, your smartphone here. But people go, uh, you know, you yeah, don't like video. You know, I don't like how I look. Don't like how I sound. I've got nothing to say. People are going to criticize me. And this is what stops people getting on video. So when I teach video, I'm a bit of a maverick on this. I have a different process. So I work on a process of heart, head, and hands. Almost everywhere you go that teaches you video, they start with the buttons first. Use your hands, press, 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 press. And you go 11 o'clock Monday morning, gonna make a video. And you go get it all set up and you're right. And then, oh, you get all nervous, don't like how it looks, how I sound, you go do it tomorrow. And you don't do it tomorrow, you don't do it next week. It mm. never gets done. Because your heart, your belief that you are the right person. And in 2019, you are the right person to deliver your message your head, where it's at, the strategies that you've got, they're not there. And until your heart and your head are there, forget your hands, it's not going to happen. So that's the process I follow. Yeah, very cool. And I think, I mean, it's, 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 it's good to have some uh, tactical stuff as well. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Can you maybe share a little bit about how somebody gets started? Because I think for some people, getting started is the hardest thing. You mentioned before mm -hmm. a little bit about um, things like, you, you know, worried about how you're going to sound or what you say, but also I think audio is a part of that as well. You know, is audio, in your opinion, how important is audio versus the, like you say, the, 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 it doesn't need to be real sophisticated to get good video, but what about audio? Can you just uh, rely on your mic on your phone or do you need to have something external? Uh, audio, okay, so let's just talk about audio. Uh, you can use the mic on your phone if you're in a quiet environment and yep. you're relatively close to the phone. Yeah. That'll work fine. If you want better audio, then get yourself something like one of these little fellows here. It's called a Rode R-O-D-E Smart Lab. I've got no association with them, but they're made for smartphones. They plug straight in, they'll work straight away, and they'll give you good, consistent sound. But what you've got to understand is that the thing is going to stop you with sound is you, because here's what happens. You go to listen to yourself back and you go, oh, God, I sound so nasally and awful. And is that my voice? Here's what most people don't understand. When we speak, we, we hear ourselves two ways. We hear ourselves convectively and conductively. Convection, think of it like a convection oven. You know, the heat goes through the air. So when we speak convectively, our sound travels through the air and comes back into our ears at the same time we're speaking conductively. The sound comes out of our voice box, up through our jaws, into the bones of our ears, and into our ears. Now, you can do this right now, Ben. You put your hands on your ears, and if you're everyone else out there on Facebook Live, you do it as well. Put your hands on your ears and press a little bit hard and just talk to yourself for five seconds. Talk to yourself out loud. One, two. I love doing videos. How's right. that? <laughs> and do you hear a deeper, bassier, yeah. sound right Definitely so that's your sound. that's your convective mm. sound so when you listen to yourself on video you don't hear the convective sound because when you speak normally you're getting a mix of the two so for the first time you're hearing yourself how everybody else hears you and everyone else loves you everyone loves your voice but to you it's not familiar and it's a thing called the familiarity principle we don't like things we're not familiar with mm. and we hear our voice and we go is that what i sound like yeah, well, that's what you sound like to the rest of the world. But no, it's not how you sound like to you. But get this, 99.9999% of the rest of the world experiences exactly the same thing. So take that worry, put it in a little box, lock the key, throw it away. There's nothing you can do about it. Not you, Ben, not the best presenter in the world, not the best radio people, movie stars. We all suffer this. So um, get over that concern and just start speaking your... Uh, truth onto your video and just get into it now thanks yeah. for those of you that have just joined us i'm here with julian may that we're talking about how to use video and in particular uh you know using your smartphone as a tool in your business to grow your business and get your message out there if you do have any questions i am monitoring the question box in the live stream here on my phone so feel free to ask any questions that you might have oh and i've just accidentally pressed a button i shouldn't have on my phone but there we go i've got it back <laughs> but if you do have any questions you can ask them there um so the other day uh julian i had a client come in and chat to me about using video in their business and they hadn't done it. i think they've been thinking about it for months right and 
Uh, I think where they struggle is with confidence in just getting it done. What would your advice be to that client? How, how do you get somebody to get more confident so they just get it done? If you've never heard of the imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. uh, you need to understand a couple of things about it. One, uh, the imposter syndrome is uh, its very common. And it's where we think we're not as good as we really think we are. We think somehow we've got into this job or position we're in uh, through the back door. You know, they have actually found out I don't know as much as I actually know. And you don't say much because you want to keep a lid on this. You don't want anyone to find out. The imposter syndrome is incredibly common. Uh, Richard Br um, uh, Branson. Um, suffers imposter syndrome. Um, Tom Hanks, it's, uh, the list goes on. Oprah Winfrey, imposter syndrome. So you're not alone. I'll can, can I tell you a story? Yeah, please. Let's do okay. it. So in my early times, uh, when I started off as a, as a cameraman, uh, I met a guy and his name was Victor Borger. Victor Borger was very famous in his time. He was Danish. He was a concert pianist but he was a comedian as well. And he used to star in movies with Frank Sinatra, had his own uh, NBC late night show. He was sort of like the Jimmy Fallon of you know the 1960s. And as he was in the seventh decade of his career, I was in the first decade of mine, and we just crossed paths. And I was filming him at a big black grand uh, piano, big Steinway. And I was setting up the shot and I was a bit nervous because I was trying to make my, you know, impression that it was all going to be good. And he came over to me, you know, very, you know, world famous person and said, my boy, as you say, my boy, uh, can I see what you're setting up? You were shot. And so I set up a monitor for him and I was all nervous. He went, oh, my boy, that is wonderful. That is magical. And I replied, Oh, anyone could do that and went to walk away and his hand went on my arm and stopped me and he told me this he said have you ever wanted uh, to buy a gift for someone you know someone special and you spend all this time choosing the gift you know it has to be the right thing and then you spend all the time wrapping the gift and then you spent all the time like writing the right words on the card and then you had to get the right moment to give this to somebody now Imagine if you gave it to someone after all that effort and they looked at it and went, oh yeah, threw it away. How would you feel? Now, I wasn't a great conversationalist back then, Ben, uh, but I went, uh, rejected? He said, yeah, rejected. And he said, when I'm on stage and I finish what I'm doing, I stand and I take applause because I allow the audience to say thank you. They are giving a gift of their gratitude to me. And he said, I just gave you a gift. I gave you the gift of a compliment. And right in front of my face, you screwed that up and you threw it away. He said, you didn't mean to, but that's exactly what you did. And you just told me that I'm a bad judge of character, that I don't see quality when I see it. And he said, you've got to understand, you've got to allow people to give you a compliment. And I think that if you're a person out there listening and you can't take a compliment. And there was a stage in my life I couldn't take a compliment either. It's a really good indicator that you suffer from the imposter syndrome, that you don't value what you do. You don't value your knowledge. So to me, the first, the pro, where, uh, to start on your way to video confidence is to accept a compliment. And it's really easy. If somebody says something to you and they're complimenting you, you say, hey, thanks, it was really nice. That made my day. That's all you've got to say. And then you practice that. And that sounds strange, but you want to get on video, unpack what is holding you back getting on video. That's a good indicator. Yeah, okay, that's a good tip because I think yeah. a lot of people can relate to that. And I, I'm, but is that the? Do you think that's the main reason people struggle doing video? Is that they they're suffering from imposter syndrome, or do you think there's? It's, well, it's 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 it, it, it's a mixture. So they they suffer from imposter syndrome. Yeah. Oh, what have I got to say? If I say something, people are going to criticize me for what what I say. And then of course they don't like how they look. They don't like how they sound. They don't like how they they move. But what they're really afraid of deep down is damaging their status. Because all through our life, we try to get up this ladder because up the ladder, the further up we go, we go, the safer we are. And this comes back to our primordial caveman brain because as we were cavemen going across the savannas, 
we weren't we roamed in groups and we were safest if we were closest to the middle of the group. You didn't want to be on the outside of the group because that's where the lions would pick you off. So we moved to the middle of the group. Well, we don't have those worries anymore in modern life. We have a vertical ladder and that status. So the higher up this ladder we go, the safer we feel. And we don't want to say anything that will potentially damage that status. And that is the big, the big uh, killer for people getting on video. So until you can get over that, this is why I work on this process of heart, head and hands. Because until you unpack this and go, oh, okay, it's not just me, everyone suffers this, maybe I do know more than I actually um, um, mean. Maybe someone is gonna criticize you, actually it's not maybe someone's gonna criticize you, someone will criticize you. Someone will, yeah. <laughs> but you know, I've never bled once, Ben, I've never bled and it's, it's still here, <laughs> little bit, but boy, oh boy, it's just, you've, it's a daily dose of mild discomfort. That's all it is. And it brushes off and you have to unpack this and you have to accept this. Um, and there's, there's no getting away from this, Ben, and this is really important. Back to this smartphone and being uh, the interface to the fourth industrial revolution, there's a simple physicality that people have to understand. When you look at your smartphone, text is really small but your fingers are really big and you can't operate small text with big fingers. We all know this. And for this simple reason, we are developing a new language and that language is video to operate on smart devices. And if, you, and if you're out there and you're going, yeah, oh, that's all right, you know, I don't run a business, video job applications are coming in. And if you can't present your best case it's not a human who are gonna view video job applications. It's gonna be a computer with an algorithm and we all need to learn this ability to present ourselves better on video. Mm. So talking about then, okay, so um, here we go. I've got a, a question in here. Oh, this is a great question actually. So I've got a question that's just coming from Vishnu. Thank you, Vishnu, so much, mate, for uh, your question. I really appreciate it. If you do have questions, by the way, feel free to put them in here. Uh, so Julian, he asks you, what's the best way to start a video to capture and keep the audience's attention? Great question. Hey, Vishu, great question. Okay, this we, we can talk about titles now. Uh, people get obsessed with titles. They think, okay, I'm going to make these videos. So the first thing I need to do is go get someone to make me up titles with great music behind. It does and look good. You go, <laughs> no, you go pay, you know, you may spend $10, you may spend um, $500 on these titles. And the thing is, they're probably about 10 to 15 seconds too long. You don't need long titles. If you're going to have any titles, two to three seconds, but you don't put them at the head. You put a hook at the head of the video. So uh, one point per video. We've all got short attention spans now. So think about if you've got five things to say, make five videos. And you're going to make this one video and you're going to start it with a hook. Uh, and what is of interest to the person? So uh, you might be a, you know, you might run a, a pest control company, and you could go um, uh, having having uh, ha having problems with uh, termites and doors. Well, in this video, I got a solution for you. Then you bring your two or three second title in, doo -doo -doo -doo, and then you answer their problem. And at the end, you give them a little call to action. Well, if you think that's interesting, I've actually made another four videos exactly about this problem. If you don't, uh, if you don't know where those videos are, you can always go to my website and I put these five videos on a little uh, cheat sheet for you and it will answer those problems for you. And that's how you can get people to sign up for you. So yeah, I think I know what you're talking about, those long intros, because uh, you don't have much, well, have, you, have you done any study on how long or how quickly you've got to get someone's attention before they skip off your video? Yeah. There's, I mean, if, if, if everyone's after a quantitative, uh, you know, figure, how long should it be? And I always answer that Theodore Roosevelt, you know, um, uh, old uh, prime minister, uh, uh, president of the United States, he nailed it. He said, be brief, be sincere, be seated. And that is speak short, uh, quickly, say it what you mean and then get off the stage and sit down and it's exactly the same with video how long your video should be is say what you have to say say it concisely and then finish stop it so whether that's 30 seconds one minute two minutes three mm. minutes shorter is better we have shorter attention spans now uh, mm. the, I, I, I can't give a figure just say what you mean and then shut up <laughs> <laughs> that's a good advice. I think that's really good advice. So 
um, you, you alluded towards the fact before that your little travel kit had you had a I think you said it was a shaving bag or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So when you're um, you know putting your kit together to from a technical point of view, you got your smartphone. What else is in that? What else do you have in your kit? Okay, right, so I have a tiny little tri a cheap tripod. Uh, you know, it probably costs about thirty or forty dollars. Nothing big. So with tripods, don't go. Don't go looking that, oh, I've got to get one with a really nice head that does pan and tilt. You never pan and tilt. I, I tell you different ways to pan and tilt, but you don't do it with your tripod. Your tripod is just something to stabilize your camera. Then you're going to get a, a little clamp that clamps your smartphone uh, onto the top of your tripod. Tripod just screws in there. Now, here's a little tip. You get a lot of these little clamps, oh, I've got one over there, that, uh, they're spring-loaded. You get them on selfie sticks and they're, they're small, but they've got a problem with them. You've got to wrestle your smartphone in. And when you wrestle your smartphone in, you, you turn it off all the time by accident. Get yourself one of these. And uh, I'll provide a link for, you know, you can put up in your, your show notes later if you want. Uh, but it's got a screw top and it's just so much more convenient and easy and faster to clamp your phone in. So mm. I've got one of those. I've got a little tripod. Then I've got my uh, microphone that I showed you there before. Then, uh, so I used to carry cases of lighting gear. Ta-da, that's my light. So this is now a little uh, LED light, uh, runs for about an hour and Gonna hate. Well, there you go. It's it's fantastic. You can adjust the color temperature. It's smaller than the smartphone. Uh, just runs off a USB charge. Uh, great for you know if you're standing uh, outside and there's a little bit of toppy light. You've got shadows under your eyes. You can just sort of smooth your face out a little bit with that. And then this is very important. This. Ta-da! Right. It's the back of an exercise pad a piece of cardboard and a pair of scissors, the little hole through it there. And what you do with this, you know, when you uh, do, imagine you had a camera where Ben, where would you look? If I was doing an interview and I said to you, where would you look? Where would you say? Uh, for me, I like looking in the lens like I right. am right now. Right down the barrel of the lens. That's hundred yeah. percent. That's where you look. You know that when we do selfie videos, you know, we you know look at ourselves and we set them up. Where does almost everyone look? They look, look at themselves on the screen, don't they? The <laughs> so you're looking there, but the camera is actually here. Mm. So if you transfer translated that into a like a regular camera, you wouldn't be looking at the camera. It's a very odd way to connect with people not looking into their eyes. So first thing you got to do is it's what called it's called locate and lock. So you've got to locate your camera. How do you find your camera if you don't know where it is? You put it into selfie mode, get your finger and just start pressing every, and then finally you'll see your finger come over the hole and then you put a little marker. See, I've got a little bit of tape there. So that's so I can locate and I lock onto my lens, but then I've got a problem. If I'm speaking and I see my face there, we as humans are designed to look at someone as we're talking to them. And then you start looking shifty as you're looking from your lens back to you, which is even worse. And that's what I use this little bit of cardboard for. It simply goes over the front like that. The little cutout has my timer and my sound volume meter so I can see I'm recording and my sound is okay. And that is a little cutout for my on off button. And that stops me looking and I can locate and lock and talk to the camera and that means I'm talking to you and I'm focused on you. And then I have, this is good enough for pilots who run a plane. So it's good enough to me, a checklist. That's it. Just a handwritten checklist because I've done this a lot, but I can't tell you how many times I do simple things like, and this is the, the, the biggest mistake. If you use your smartphone, you forget to put it in flight mode. And that means you're in the middle of your great take. Uh, you're doing, oh, I do, oh, I've got to get out of again. You go, oh, this is going good. You're thinking I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. And then someone rings you in the middle of your take and you lose it because your phone rings. So this is still a phone and we've got to put it in flight mode and turn it into a, a camera. Uh, and that is just about it. You know, bar a few other little bits and pieces. That's it. Uh, 
Uh, I've lost your audio, Ben. You're back now. I can hear you. I'm back. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, yep. that's it. That's good. Okay. Brilliant. I went. Uh, I went flat. My batteries went flat. Okay. <laughs> Problem with age. <laughs> so now we've we've just shifted to a different microphone. But that's right. It's a good thing about being in the studio. And that's that's live for you, isn't it? That's what happens when you're live. That's it. Um, yeah. So so that so you've got that kit there. So less than what. Well, I'm, I'm assuming less than 500 bucks probably for a light tripod microphone. Yeah, okay. Well, let's let's go through the prices. I can tell you that. So that, uh, da -da -da. I mean, honestly, a cheap little tripod costs you, I don't know, $50, $60 or something like that. Or you can get a little small and you don't have to spend much or borrow something. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The clamp costs about $15 to $20. That's all. Then that light, about $100. The microphone is 80 thereabouts. Um, bag you get off the airplane when they give you your socks and your, <laughs> your eye mask. So that costs you a business class flight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, you know, free, uh, and, and it, you, you already own your phone. And the great thing about a phone, if you make this your video system, every time you upgrade your phone, you upgrade your video system as well to the latest. So you get, you know, Two for yeah. the price of one. Yeah. So you mentioned before, um, I do have another question come through as well, but you mentioned before that you put it into airplane mode. So yeah. are you not, you're not promoting doing live videos like this so much? This is more about recording content and then using that to upload or? Yeah. So uh, if you're in flight mode, yes, that's to uh, make videos and then edit them up a bit. Yeah. And again, you can edit them all in the phone with different apps. Uh, and a lot of those apps are free. Uh, or you can then uh, export that to your desktop and do a bit of editing on there. It's a bit easier, you know, like on a, on a larger desktop. Yeah. Or you can do what we're doing here. It was Facebook Live. Uh, in that case, you definitely don't want to go to flight mode. It won't work. Uh, yeah, do do live videos. I would still recommend doing what you've done there. You've got a lapel mic on. Uh, it's just for consistency of sound. Yeah. And, uh, you know, think, think about your lighting. So simple rule of um, thumb for lighting. Uh, lighting is, is an art. I mean, you know, you can learn how to light, but it's pointless. So it's just, let me speak about this very briefly. I see on so many sites, you go on to uh, explain to you about lighting. They say you must get a key light, a fill light, yeah. a backlight, and that's all sort of like got merit, but it's pointless getting those unless you know what to do with them. And lighting is more an art than a science. What you need is one light. And this is where you put the light. It's at, it's here. There it is right there. You put it directly over your camera and looking straight in your eyes. And it should, and if it's, if you go, oh, it's really bright, you go, brilliant. That's where it should be. Because in photography, there's a thing called the vanity light and they use it in fashion photography. So just say that, you know, um, yeah, I mean, this was my camera and I was shooting me looking, I'd have the light looking straight towards me there. And it's a vanity light. It's actually very flattering. Makes you look younger takes away a lot of your lumps and bumps and wrinkles. So that's a good reason for putting it there. So without going in into lighting, uh, you just want to get uh, see your face cleanly and put a little kick on your eyes. When you put the light straight there, um, and I'm looking on you, Ben, I can actually see it. You've got two little lights on your eyes. You can always tell where, where the lights are set. Yeah, because I could tell you, you've got lights either side of you because the eyes are actually mirrors. And if you go in closely, I've got in my book, I've got a photo of it where you a real close up of, of an eye and you can see where all the lights are. It's a mirror. And, yeah. but it puts that little kick on there because the eyes are the windows to the souls. And in feature films, I use this all the time was that they'll do all the lighting. Then they put one light directly over the camera and they raise it up till they get that little sparkle. Yeah. It makes, it makes you connect so much better. Yeah, such good tips, mate. Really, and I think people are really appreciating this as well. Kerry O'Neill has said such great hacks, loving the hacks that you're sharing. If you are watching this live, if you've just joined us, I can see we've got a couple of new people join us, which is cool. Uh, feel free to ask questions in the comments down below. I am monitoring it there and Julian will, will answer whatever you've got for him. He'd be more than happy to. Um, and uh, I've got another question that's coming from Chris Altree. Chris says, should you subtitle your videos? 
<laughs> Great. This is this is so topical. Yes. Yes. Uh, so sub, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about subtitles and captions. They sort of are the same thing, but they're not. Uh, and captions are made for deaf, for uh, hard of hearing people, hearing impaired people. And there's actually laws in a lot of countries, if you use captions, about how long they should be. And uh, subtitles, so, so captions are a word for word translation subtitles are what you get you know if you go to the movies and it's subtitled into a different language it's an interpretation sort of saying the same thing but it's not exactly the same you need captions so when you use a service to put those words those captions make sure you click the button that says captions don't click the subtitles that you're getting the wrong thing so number one you want captions then there's a couple of easy there's a couple of services to do this one you can do it on a lot of phones automatically now voice recognition software is getting very very good mm, so if you've absolutely. got ios apple phone then there's a native app that comes you've probably got it on your phone you haven't even realized it it's called clips c-l-i-p-s and clips when you press the button and speak it automatically writes the words as you speak it's uncannily accurate if you remember to say your d's and t's at the ends of your words if you speak a little slower and a little clearer, it's really good. But if it messes up, just like operating a, a text on a, you know, uh, editing a text, you go in, you can just edit your words. So that's a great way. If you're on Android, it's called AutoCap. It's free as well. Uh, and it's actually better than the iOS one. If you want to use a paid service, you record your video, you edit it down, and then you upload it to one called Rev, R-E-V.com. And it costs you a dollar a minute for someone somewhere in the world to listen to your video, type out your words. Your accuracy is normally about 99%, takes about half an hour. Then you upload that file into your editing program. And like magic, there are the words underneath. There's another service now, it's like Rev, but it's called Temi, T-E-M-I.com, and it uses an algorithm to do it. It costs you 10 cents a minute to do. It takes about a minute to get back, and it is really good. And when you get it back, you get it back in a form that it, it highlights what it thinks it's got wrong, and you can just make the changes, and it's got your, you can uh, press play and see yourself talking, and then you can export it as a file that can go up in your captions, but it gives you the options of using, uh, getting a Word document, a PDF, uh, a, just a regular text file. So then you can create content out of that. Immediately, you can just post it up as a blog post, uh, you know, break, break it up into sections. And that's 10 cents a minute. I like Temi. Yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Oh, I mean, we use Rev. I didn't even know Temi existed. So we'll put that on the list of things to try. Yeah, just, <laughs> just, just try it out because yeah. they let you do your first video for free. Save yourself 10 cents, all right? Yeah. So you talked about then using it as a blog post. So maybe we can transition into um, what do we do with these videos? So you've sort of spoken through getting confident, getting, you know, using our smartphone as a tool, what accessories do we need to make it work well for us? Um, how to, you know, uh, get a, a record a video. What do we do with it once we've made the content? I mean, that's, I think well, you that's... put it, yeah, definitely. You So what you want is you want people to see it. So, uh, okay, let's just start. Just say you're in a business or in, in an organization. Uh, you can use this to communicate within your organization or outside your organization. Uh, you can send it directly. I mean, you can literally, you know, make a video and just message it. To someone if you want but let's just say we want to then upload it to a platform that we can send it out and more people can see it uh, so if you upload it uh, let's just talk about three platforms youtube vimeo and wistia um, they've all got different uh, 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 strengths uh, youtube is a search engine it's actually now i don't know i think it's almost a bigger search engine than google so if you want your video to be found put it on youtube Vimeo is a wonderful platform to, if you've got a lot of videos that you want organized into, um, you know, different sections and, and groups, almost like a portfolio, then Vimeo, it's a search engine as well, but it's not as powerful, but it's a great way to organize your video. So it, maybe you're artistic or you had um, a lot of, you know, how-to videos, you can upload it there. 
And Wistia is what you want to use if you're doing business. Wistia is a hosting platform. The tools in it are designed to give you things like uh, people can watch your videos and you want them to take action. Then you can put an opt-in button or you know, a, a click this button to take you to a link. And you can actually embed it in the video. They can press the video screen and it will take them there. Great stuff, great information. All right, we're pretty much uh, running out of uh, time, mate. I think I've got a little bit over time, but I'm fine. I find this topic uh, really interesting and I know that the people tuning in do as well. I think uh, Chris said that's fantastic. Thanks, great info with a couple of smiley faces. So thanks for that, Chris. How, I mean, you, you held up your book before and I think anybody who's watching this live stream is gonna be interested in getting a free copy of that book. I mean, really generous offer. How do they go about grabbing that, buddy? Okay, so if you want Get Video Smart, the book, it is at julianmather.com. So J-U-L-I-A-N-M-A-T-H-E-R.com. And if you go there, the complete book, it's not like in the first chapter or you know a crib sheet of it. The entire digital book is yours because I want people to have this information. It's going to help people uh, professionally and, and personally to start this process of making videos. So it's there. Uh, it'll just be a download, you know, put, put, put your email in and uh, I'll put you on my, my update list because I run workshops, I run in-house corporate and business workshops and I run public workshops as, as well. And I'll just keep you updated on that. Um, and I'm, you, you hear from me about once a month, that's it. Great, and you know, of course, like any of those lists, if you, if you decide it's not for you, hit the unsubscribe. Oh, hit the unsubscribe. I, I, I'm, I'm here to help you, not hinder you. <laughs> uh, I don't, uh, you won't hurt me if, if you don't want to listen to me, it's okay. Yeah. Great. So the team have put that link into the comments. So just uh, click on that link. It'll go across to Julian's website. Make sure you grab yourself a free copy of that book because what a generous offer. And, you know, I think it goes without saying that video is such a huge part of communicating with our target market these days. And, uh, I mean, it has so many benefits. I mean, we could just talk and talk and talk. I love video. As anyone who follows me now, I do a lot of video. So Julian, thanks once again, mate, for coming on and uh, doing this Facebook Live with us. It's been really, really good. I've appreciated the opportunity. Fantastic. Now, if you did enjoy the video, make sure you share it around. Give it a thumbs up. Leave your comments below. Even if you didn't catch this live and you're watching a replay of it, leave your questions below and we'll make sure we get Julian to, uh, we'll forward those on to him to answer those questions for you. And that uh, free book download will be available for you even if you didn't capture this live. So head across to julianmather.com and download yourself a copy of his book for free. Get yourself making some videos. Get yourself out there and uh, let the world know what your message is because if you don't, your competitors will. And I think it's so important that you jump the gun on all of them and uh, and have a go. So thanks again for joining us. If you've enjoyed it, as I said, give it a thumbs up and make sure you join us for the next one. I've been Ben Futrell. You've been fantastic for tuning in. Until next time, get out there and make some profit. See ya.